dear friends in this lecture we are going to talk about the issues concerning the uh, testing the virus of legislations constitutional validity of the provision of law if you want to test how will you go about it and we all know that recently the three criminal laws have come into operation from 1st july and there is a lot of discussion is there and uh, honorable madras high court uh, the dmk party and many others have challenged it and uh, during the arguments the learned uh, justice it comes before a division bench honorable justice uh, ss sundar after hearing asked the question this is not a three laws have been named first question they said is we have named uh, bhartiya nyaya sanhita and all that but that is not a one of the grounds may be very weak ground because we have vinoba bhav and buddha so that's what the learned judge said after hearing the judge raised the issue what was the so much hurry such a tested laws normal process is you want to bring a change you would bring but then it should have been referred to the law commission there should be lot of deliberations data impact analysis has to be done just like that making law in the guise of simplification this may result in serious consequences now those of you who are interested to come into the picture to challenge the criminal laws you can pick up one law or two provisions of the code whether it is a criminal procedure code or the indian penal code or the evidence act and then do a lot of research on that lot of data then you have to establish that it is uh, against the fundamental rights in particular article 14 arbitrary article 19 in violation of freedom of speech profession and all freedoms and against uh, the right to life mostly it will come under the right to life and you all know that when you are trying to bring that particular provision as in violation of uh, article 14 you have to establish it is manifestly arbitrary and there should be, there is a substantive unreasonableness how will you establish manifestly arbitrary and substantive unreasonableness i will discuss the jurisprudence of this and the settled laws we will go deep into the subject secondly if you have freedoms then freedom of uh, speech and other things uh, this should be tested against uh, they have to prove it is within the reasonable restrictions and we have to establish it is not it has nothing to do with the nexus what you want to achieve and uh, what is the law it is uh, not uh, in line with it and it is unreasonable restrictions then the jurisprudence of those who will take the settled position of law from the beginning lot of discussion lot of request uh, reading is required i have done lot but i would like to share so that many of you also can start building up uh, this things to protect the see there is a two views are there with regard to the criminal laws because suddenly you have changed the law and uh, uh, though 95% of the same name same provisions the name is changed it itself is a great confusion for us but then there are other sweeping profession uh, provisions 5% particularly concerning the life and liberty that we will come we would like to educate so that many enterprising students of law young students of law can do some work and assist the senior councils or you can yourself come in we have see we are seeing in supreme court uh, the youngsters are also participating in great length so a little i want to explain because i have challenged uh, virus of legislative act 
as well as the subordinate legislation before the Honorable Madras High Court. Uh, about four repetitions have been deliberated in the last five years. And uh, one is before the Honorable Supreme Court. I have taken that to the Supreme Court. So, now dear friends, basics I am talking, you all know, but then to uh, recap, we can say, we know that uh, India, Indian uh, constitution, the people of India are supreme. People of India are supreme. It is the people of India who give, we, that's word, we Indians, citizens of India, Bharat. So constitution is subservient to people of India. That's the first step. The second is, it is the constitution which creates three state organs. It is the three constitution which creates three state organs. One is legislature, parliament. What is the duty, main duty is to produce laws, legislate. That's all. And uh, the parliament, as you know, represented by the will of people, 542 members of parliament, elected by 140 plus crores of Indians, they go and represent and then try to discuss on various issues. Now, when the parliament is enacting a law, it has serious consequences, not for today, a long term to come. If you see, Constitution of India is a document, it's a law, constitutional law. And the Constitution is made in 1950, it's almost 75 years. And during this long period, basic tenets of Constitution is still there. And so, it is made with an intention to ensure that generations will be benefited. It, it has to serve the cause of the emerging situation, societal needs of the emerging population. It is an organic document. Therefore, constitution is amendable. We all know that the constitution is like any law. It can be amended. But it is tested. Every law, including the constitution amendments, are tested against whether they are in violation of the basic feature of our constitution. Basic feature, if it is in violation of the violative of the basic feature of constitution, will be struck down. Now here what happens is the parliament being the uh, ultimate task with uh, producing laws, this by enactment, they are static in nature. Because they have to serve the long-term needs of the people of India. So there is a big process. There is a need felt. And then that will be referred to a lot of deliberations by the eminent people in the parliament expressing their problems. Thereafter, it will be referred to law commission. And they will deliberate. They are the actual core experts. In parliament, it is not necessary. All the members of parliament are originally... Uh, experts in this area. But then there is a need they feel and then they refer it to the law commission. Then there is a big process. People's views are taken like what deliberations will take place. It's a party place, a participative democracy. So this is also one has to understand. Very well drafted situation. Right. Now we all know some, uh, apart from that Parliament cannot uh, interfere every time, meet and find out the day-to-day -day problem because when the law is enacted, it's enacted by some part people, some experts. Their intention may not be reflected fully in the form of the law. Therefore, they will have what is called a subordinate legislation. This is the law in action, dynamic, whereas that uh, static parliamentary laws. <clears throat> So we have the next step is the executive, that is the government, Union of India, state governments and all. They, these people, this, this exact power is there. Uh, the Union of India, that's why we see Union Prime Minister holds so much power. 
he is the ultimate power authority subject to whether he has got majority in parliament or not though the parliament is ultimate once you elect the prime minister with a majority then he goes and uh, the subordinate legislation for example if you take uh, everywhere this uh, the insolvency and bankruptcy court is there that's what i've challenged and uh, the law is made insolvency bankruptcy court 2016 but then the implementation is done by one subordinate legislation that is uh, insolvency and bankruptcy board of india in other words the executive they are under uh, union of india ministry of corporate affairs they appoint uh, nclt lawyer uh, judges in other words executive uh, the legislative power is given to executive that is the problem subordinate legislation and that is a necessary evil and we know recently tribunals they are called tribunals quasi judicial bodies recently of course in chandra kumar's case onwards the, the constitutional validity of these tribunals have been tested and honorable supreme court said as subject to parameters laid down there is a debate that is going on why do you have this unnecessary tribunals where the quality of justice is that's what honorable supreme court judge judge uh, were feeling some and the cost of litigation has gone up specialized tribunals too much and they are not achieving the power and excessive power without accountability that deliberations are going on why don't you merge these tribunals to uh, be part of the high court there is a pros and cons already high court is burdened with too much why you can burden it another thing another thing is what is there you have more benches of high court and there will be more independent uh, roster system all there let us see how the discussion develops that's a separate part subordinate legislation means ibb itself makes laws they have a rule making power is there under once section 196 of the parliament gives them power delegates the power and within that framework they will start making laws slowly the power is getting uh, delegated delegated to then there is a judicial control over delegated legislation we are going to take up as a theoretical subject <clears throat> but coming back to this here we have parliament to produce laws and the parliament has delegated its power to subordinate legislation they make that is the law in action and then uh, executive executive the doctrine of separation of powers there are three state organs uh, parliament uh, union of india that is executive and then uh, union of india as well as state governments uh, and then the third is the judiciary now here the role of judiciary is very very important who makes the laws is the question is the parliament making laws because all these state organs have all the three functions primary function of parliament is legislature and uh, executive power also parliament has got in the truth speak and the exercise similarly uh, executive has got legislative powers because through level subordinate legislation they make rules and ultimately judiciary also has got the executive power but primarily interpretation of laws that is what the uh, supreme court and the high courts and the subordinate other courts hierarchical system <clears throat> but the as on the present day justice the power, judiciary by virtue of their position though they have to implement the interpret the laws through the process of interpretation only laws are made that is what is the opinion honorable justice holmes of united states of america supreme court has clearly said that the it is the judicial officer who is making the law in the process by way of interpretation of that and why a judiciary should be superior reasonably than others though there are a lot of discussions uh, we have seen the judiciary should be in uh, lakshman rekha this that but <clears throat> spontaneously the system requires judiciary has to have a power a power without justice is tyrannous and justice without power is inefficient 
and therefore the judiciary by the process of judicial review will ensure the interpretation and then make the other state organs function within their spheres therefore <clears throat> ultimately it is the judiciary <clears throat> an independent judiciary is uh, the <clears throat> life blood of a democracy and uh, they are guardian angels uh, honorable supreme court is the guardian angel of fundamental rights protection of fundamental rights <clears throat> now you are going to challenge a law made by the parliament see judiciary also has got its own limitations so when parliament <clears throat> expressing the will of 142 members of parliament representing 140 crores of population makes laws how 34 judges <clears throat> maximum five judges sitting in a bench challenge the constitutional validity when it is challenged will decide and if they believe it is in violation of the basic feature of our constitution they will dismiss that quash that but the jurisprudence that is developed is you have to be judges have to be very cautious just like that you cannot act against the act of parliament subordinate legislation also to some extent rule making uh, the subordinate legislation makes laws notifications they issue from time to time which are all tested <clears throat> for example um i have challenged through a bill for uh, constitution of nclet chennai bench there i filed a bill it is not a constitutional validity there is a, we need a bill in the interest of justice access to justice mainly access to justice article 21 finally uh, the, the we know chennai southern region entire southern region chennai bench has been constituted <clears throat> then when it is constituted the power lobby or somebody in uh, delhi they made sure that that they issued the president of nclt or nclat issued a notification saying notification saying that from future that is from the day of constitution of nclat the cases will be whatever is filed will be decided then again i filed one more bill 8170 <clears throat> saying that all cases belong to the states southern states must come to chennai bench then my honorable madras high court allowed that therefore everything was transferred union of india then i filed one petition rip bill <coughs> where <coughs> the judge adjudicating authorities are sitting only 2 hours 10:30 to 1 and one judge is looking after two benches already the 100 cases are pending adjourned and then they are going to another thing in what is this justice we need more benches and this thing again that petition writ petition 14357 of 21 is allowed and immediately they promised yes is no no we will not allow this technical member to uh, sit in the kochi bench <clears throat> but after 10 days the kochi bench that technical member never bothered about the undertaking given by ministry of corporate affairs to the madras high court again that is under challenge i oh, having all said this what i am trying to say is the notifications can be challenged if there is a notification that can be challenged as a virus constitutional validity which is in violation uh, arbitrariness three and uh, if it is a uh, Uh, something which is required then again also in order to protect your fundamental rights you can file the petitions you can see <clears throat> so the weapon that the judiciary has is the judicial review the precious is one part of the basic feature of the constitution so through the process of judicial review if the court feels it is in serious violation of fundamental rights then it will be quashed i will take step by step a detailed analysis i am doing from the beginning of the 
law for the students at the same time for young lawyers to come into the picture to help the seniors in building up a strong base uh, literature we all know that uh, one may, the now present uh, justice mr vishwanathan uh, who directly came from bar was to help the supreme court in insolvency laws or anything <coughs> with very good preparation normally from bench only supreme court gets people but you can also build up the broad of knowledge will come and uh, that is why i will explain you practically how it is to be argued how the courts are looking at it <clears throat> and uh, how we can present our case uh, these things we will discuss in part but i want you theoretically so we now understand that the act made by parliament whatever is the act through the process of interpretation it is the judiciary which makes the laws laws in dynamic situation static is the parliament dynamic is subordinate legislation which makes based on needs from the day to day for example the insolvency and bankruptcy code has come with a main focus failure of the previous laws sika and surface c and all there what happened the banks are lending money to the corporates the promoters have specialized way of taking money from banks and never repay there were non performing assets worth 12 lakh crores of rupees when raghuram rajan was the rbi governor he wanted to find out how many then there is a lot of things came but the chartered accountants are not doing proper auditing as a result nefra has come and uh, then uh, insolvency bankruptcy court came that is based on a concept you see today earlier laws were the were the debtor is in control of the assets the promoters are in control of the assets and banks are fighting cases then you take stay and years are passing therefore they thought this is not right we will have the creditors in control that is how the legislation was drafted then they said it should be a time bound resolution because today asset values there when the asset is working uh, you know a company is running it's a, let us say it is a sick company if the sick company is revived restructuring through the process of corporate insolvency resolution when it is restructured then it will again go back if you take satyam computers the share price was 2500 it's come back to 17 rupees when ramling raju has publicly announced that i have been fudging the accounts but then mahindra tech mahindra took over again the share price went to the original level employment is kept and they were producing goods that was the intention that is why insolvency laws are considered as river resolution law resolution not recovery laws but then what happened the ibbi is tasked with that the uh, banking law reforms commission is there they have done but if you take for example they studied so many laws but then they never had a solution starting itself policy decision is we let us have a law which takes care of uh, the creditors in control so that the process may be you see what happens the promoters they, it is a process they will swindle money and then keep safe as you see all those people ran away from country and all but this legislation is a very good legislation the concept that is a business concept but to implement that law you need to make regulations those regulations can be tested in madras high court when i uh, challenged section 2204 of the uh, ibc the honorable chief justice ganga purwala raised the question this is a business legislation why should we interfere <clears throat> then i told him business legislation business policy you cannot that's a settled position of law that policy decisions government should not uh, the court should not interfere that settled law because technical people are deciding you want to change challenge the uh, valuation suppose marks are less 
court should not decide what marks you should get. That is not the job of the court. And uh, but then courts can take their own opinion and be, for example, uh, the election elections. Uh, this uh, uh, the whether you should have the EVMs uh, or we should have these things. Then they will apply some law and all, which is a dynamic process. But ultimately, there is some. Uh, doctrine of separation of powers. You don't cross uh, legislative and legislature should not cross uh, the judiciary. That's a basic understanding. But ultimately, court has got the power. They can write and pass any orders. So then that means policy decisions are different and implementing the policies, you pass regulations which can be tested against Article 19, 14 and fundamental rights and all. You understand? So, <clears throat> this is always a process of interpretation. Even recently, one uh, laws have come where, you know, government is taking over properties. Honorable Madras I could also passed an order uh, saying that uh, uh, operational creditors, that is, financial creditors rule the roost in the insolvency process. Operational creditors, what is the reason? They get nothing. In the case of operational creditors, what they do is, if the company goes for liquidation, suppose company has 1000 crores, and then company goes for liquidation, the value is 100 crores, is estimated. And if 100 crore comes uh, first priority, section 53 of the code, you pay to that uh, uh, final, the liquidated cost or something, and then, then first priority is liquidation expenses, liquidation costs, then the workers along with the financial creditors. And then unsecured creditors, operational creditors come as unsecured creditors. So, suppose for example, if liquidation comes, there is no money to pay operational creditors, they get nothing. So, the uh, Honorable Justice Sesh Sai passed a judgment. Beautiful judgment, 77 pages. Though I have uh, referred that uh, in the NCL 80 Chennai bench, but then the adjudicating authority said, uh, it is uh, not applicable. <clears throat> well, this is another problem. That's what, you know, when the High Court says something, the tribunals don't care it. And they overrule the thing and they pass the orders. So that apart, then you have to go to Supreme Court. It's a big process. Anyway, but ultimately, even you see the property, you know, the constitutional focus and the philosophies will come to that. I don't want to deviate from that process. So now we are going to talk about <coughs> how to challenge, how to prepare for challenging the constitutional violation and uh, various segments of that we are going to discuss. Now, I have uh, tried everything. For example, I also learned over a period, you know, legally how to go about it. The problem is uh, for us, when you go to high court, High court will, uh, will not you get uh, that much unless the uh, chief is very strong and uh, absolutely this thing. They would like to say why unnecessarily uh, take action against the government and let that fellow go to Supreme Court. That is what the uh, what I felt uh, from my experience. Very good judges. They appreciated our uh, this thing. They heard me. I filed review petition. Review petition also was heard for 40 minutes. And they appreciate it. That is another problem. For example, we'll take up the judgment and uh, beautifully drafted judgments. But I would like to explain how you should have argued, how I have argued, with the experience gained, how I should have argued, and what all the judgments you could have used. These are the things I'll take. So I'm taking entire process, dear friends. This is the first step. In the next part, I'm going to take what is the basic jurisprudence of testing the constitutional validity and how to bring that regulation or the act of parliament or the notification is in violation of fundamental rights that also should be in such a way it should call, shock the conscience. And what happens is uh, uh, the facts of the case, the interpretation of Supreme Court judgments may not be applicable to your facts of the case. Or even if it is applicable, the court may feel it is not applicable. In uh, tribunals, if you go, that is what is happening. 
whichever judgment you give they will immediately without reading all say no no supreme court judgment doesn't apply and uh, they overrule it they will not write any reason also the binding precedents you pass the order after that years will take place the supreme court is burdened with all this uh, interpretations in supreme court it is not done uh, first of all if you file slp it will dismiss 95% just like that and what is the supreme court test the point of law high court facts and law that is how you should remember because we may think uh, what is the supreme court is meant for settling the law you understand already law is settled whether the uh, particular situation is calls for settling a different law what is settled already that is how you one has to go into the testing of this <clears throat> recently i have uh, appeared before the honorable supreme court this is a case where uh, nclt ncl 80 three years they have taken to decide the case when the case came before the honorable supreme court the judges are extremely brilliant then they asked the question straight top top lawyers up here so much fees then the top lawyer was telling he was removed by applying general clauses act 16 apply with rule 11 but the judge honorable judge uh, justice abai woka was uh, very good all those judges uh, you don't need to tell they know everything you have to just supplement it you don't need extra arguments the way in which you have to present it advocate on record chief justice of india spoke and uh, honorable justice abai woka spoke many eminent lawyers um, prashant bhushan sir spoke and abhishek singh we kapil sibal how to uh, present the law they have said for advocates on record uh, luthra ji you all have to read that you get full knowledge available on the internet you don't need much then i i wanted to tell i tell i told they were telling all that i have said that of course i didn't judge himself said uh, whatever i have to say tak he said see when there is a specific code uh, provision in the code how is it applicable when there is a specific uh, provision in the code what is the need for general clauses act i don't think that's there the act uh, makes provision in court there is a procedure no you test it that adjudicating authority has violated that procedure correct this is the provision which says this is how it should be appointed there is infirmity in his appointment then i will remove him this is the procedure laid down he did not follow i will remove him this is like a policeman having a gun that is nclt is a policeman he's got a gun he's got the power to shoot he has got the power to remove but then whether he has got the authority to remove policeman cannot shoot as an as an he likes there is a procedure laid down when to shoot where to shoot what are the instructions to be taken otherwise he will sit there 3 not 2 custodial death uh, all those things will come against the police officer so authority is somebody has to give that law and that easily he explained 2 minutes 2 minutes that's all there is no answer but then it is not settled on that day understand it will take one or two three years that is where the supreme court stands this is where the high court stands this is where the nclt that is the basic the first in the pyramid so it depends on how a lawyer presents his point of view convincingly and supported by the judges i am going to take a lot of judgments friends a um, basic focus in i want you to get trained in this uh, criminal laws i am taking for 10 criminal provisions and then i am doing research if we all together do it it will be of great help thank you friends